So, Jamal, we think of defensive line and linebackers being heavily involved in, you know, option, stopping the option. But your defensive backs, uh, obviously, how much do they have to get involved? And how different is what you're asking them to do this week compared to what you've done all season? Yeah, I think preparing for what we're going to see is going to be different um, holistically, I think, throughout our defense for everybody. The preparation is, is different. The keys are different. Um, your reads are different. Um, and so that, that presents its own problem in itself. Um, you talk about the corners and the safeties in terms of their fit and where they where they be implemented. And, and as you said, it's going to be more so in, in run support, right? Making sure that they're solid, being able to cup the ball on a perimeter. Um, but then also in the one or two times that they do get the ball thrown at them, being able to be sound. The one thing we know is that if, if you fall asleep or if your eyes aren't necessarily elite, um, you can give up the big home run hit. And you don't want to do that against, obviously, an offense like this. Um, being that they do everything else really soundly, um, we've got to be able to take that away and then be able to fit um, and run support as well. We'll go to John Antonic. Curious, you, you know, you've recruited uh, defensive backs to play Big 12 football with length right. in, in, in the passing game, and this is a whole different style that you've got to, I guess, condense in, what, 10 days? Not even 10 days, really. Right. Um, what, what are some of the things that you, you have to – to, to remind them uh, when they're playing a system like this? Yeah, the first thing is eyes. Um, it's all eye control because there's a lot of misdirection. There's guys going everywhere. I call it football in the phone booth, and that's basically what it is where it's a tight spacing and a lot of bodies in there, and, and there's, there's a rhyme or reason why they're doing things. It's not just a, a scrum, so to speak. And so for us, there's a progression in which your eyes go through so you can make sure you fit it correctly and that your gap sound. And uh, – that's going to be the key um, in terms of their eyes. And then once they've key and diagnosed exactly what's happening to them, it's like anything else. It's see ball, get ball. So then comes the effort piece. And then that, it's all about making sure we get all 11 hats to the ball, um, being that that can alleviate any issues that you have in terms of guys not, not necessarily being gap sound or, or responsibility sound. And then when you get there, finished with bad intentions. We, we need turnovers. You know, when you got a team that has clock control the way they do, and, and, and hold on to the ball and really control the game in that way. Um, it's on us to get the ball back to the offense. And, and you do that in two ways. One is you stop them on downs. Two, you turn it over on downs. So either way, um, we're, we're looking to make that happen. Obviously getting it back to our guys. Mitch Davis, go ahead. Coach, uh, talking with the other coaching staff and uh, being an outsider looking in from Memphis, Coach, talk about that culture of the program that you guys are bringing to the Liberty Bowl, and how has that uh, helped you guys in your preparation for the AutoZone Liberty Bowl in the matchup with Army? Yeah, well, culture is going to be huge, especially in this game, because we're playing a team that culturally is probably as solid as they come, right? Their culture um, is is different and different in, in a good sense. And so for us, we're going to have to lean on on the pillars of our program and make sure that guys are doing things in the right way. You know, we, we ask them to be accountable and responsible on and off the field. And uh, this type of game is going to really, really test that. Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to really see exactly where they lie in terms of their responsibility and being able to do their job. I know on defense we call it 111, which means each guy of the 11 do your job. And uh, we ask them to do that as well off the field. And, you know, those things we, we'd like to think they correspond and translate. And, uh, and so that would be a good test to see where we are in terms of culture. But uh, as you said, culture is going to be everything. It's going to be one of those games that's going to be hard fought. We're playing a, a good outfit, tough guys, very sound, polished, um, and, and wired the right way above the neck for the most part. And so we're going to have to match that. We're going to have to match it. And uh, it would be a good challenge. I'm excited to see it. Cody Nesper, go ahead. Hey, Jamal. Um, how do you balance being aggressive – and being disciplined enough not to get sucked into their option. I'm not sure, Cody. That's a, that is the right. That that is the riddle that we're trying to, to solve, literally as we speak. Um, but you're right. It's all about the passive aggressiveness of it all. I think you play passively until you can diagnose where the ball is, and then that's where the aggressive piece comes in. Where now it's just time to go make a play. Um, but you're absolutely right. You can't just say, okay. I'm going balls to the wall. I'm going to get it, you know, on every play. That's not that's not the case here. There's got to be a rhyme, a reason as to why you're doing what you're doing, and then you've got to be elite, not only with your eyes, but then in the technique and what you're doing. So, there's it's multifaceted. Um, 
but at the end of the day, it's it's all about again ha seeing the right things and then reacting aggressively once that that's been diagnosed. Back to John. Go ahead. Two more for me. Uh, one, what is off schedule to them? Is it second and nine, second and eight, third and six? What right. are you looking for there to get them off schedule? Right. That's the first question. Yeah. Well, if you look at it, I mean, they're they're utilizing all four downs. So right. term, their schedule is a little bit different than most teams. Um, you know, they're comfortable with getting two and a half, three yards per down. Obviously, you do the simple math there, and that's a first down. And they're very, very comfortable with that. So really, off schedule for them doesn't necessarily exist unless it gets to a third and long, fourth and really long situation. Outside of that, um, they, I, I believe they feel like at any point in time, they're still on schedule to do what they need to do offensively and give themselves a chance. Um, what we've got to do is minimize the amount of yards that are given up, obviously, in, in the early downs, um, which gives us a chance to then be able to kind of pigeonhole some things on, on the latter downs, the, three, the third down and the fourth down situations. Um, but, but it's going to be hard to get a team off kilter or off schedule when they're utilizing all four downs and only need two and a half yards per in order to feel like they're on schedule. Um, and so that's 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 going to be a you know a problem presented in itself. We're going to have to be really good on early downs. The second one I have is um, a kind of a different dynamic. Uh, you were going to face a Tennessee team that was probably playing out their schedule, mm -hmm. three wins. This is a team with a with a point to prove. Mm -hmm. You know they were left out of a bowl. They've got nine wins, another win over a Big Twelve team. So that adds a different dynamic to this game, doesn't it? The player, the team that you're facing. You know what. I I'd like to say that, but I'd probably be lying and saying so in that for us, they roll the balls out. We got to play ball. Um, they have something to prove, so do we. You know, our last showing, defensively at least, wasn't where we wanted to be. And so we got, we got more to prove, in my opinion, than anybody else. And our guys know that, and, and our coaches, we obviously are going to preach that, and that's, that's about it. They got something to prove, we do too. So we'll, we'll get after it. Greg Hunter, go ahead. So, Jamal, just in terms of bowl experience, go back to your playing days. Obviously, you would have had some some special ones, and even away from the field. I mean, just the the fun aspects of being in a bowl. You, you got to feel that the players are going to miss that this time around. So, I'm sorry. One more time, Bubba. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean the the, the fun around bowl games. I mean, yeah. go back to your playing days. I got you would you. have had a ton of great opportunities. Yeah, these kids don't get that. That's you got to feel for them for that. It's it's unfortunate. And you're absolutely right. I think as a coaching staff, we all know it's all ball games are always a combination of a lot of our work throughout the season. And although you're, you're showing up to obviously, first of all, win the game, uh, you want it to be a joyful, happy experience. Our job as coaches is to try to do as much as we can to make it that within the parameters that have been set. We know what life is right now. I think our kids understand that. And, you know, this season has been different. It's been different. And this is this is just one of those. This is another. Another thing that just seems to be a little bit off about this year, but our guys have been resilient and worked through those things, and um, we're going to ask them to do it one more time. 